now my question is is it is it a crime to speak in tongues or rather let me put it this way why is it that orthodox don't really mm. believe in in speaking in tongues like the pentecostal thank you so very much and this is not question about doctrines which i cannot speak on behalf of all the the orthodox or protestants but i can only speak on behalf of my church the church i attend and the church i am also privileged to be part of and and work with uh church of the brethren the church of the brethren we have three things that are very important to us peacefully simply and together so when we say together we mean love now that word together we don't want anybody to come to church of the brethren and go back without understanding anything so now listen let me read to you a lot of biblical verses and then maybe you can get total understanding first of all i made it clear it's not a sin and it's still not an offense in church of the brethren to speak in tongues but now here first corinthians 13 from verse 1 if i speak in the tongues of men and angels but have no love i am a noisy gong or a clanging symbol and if i have prophetic powers and understanding all mysteries and all knowledge and if i have all faith so as to remove mountains but have no love i am nothing now listen to verse 3 if i give all i have and if i deliver up my body to be torn but have no love i gain nothing now verse 4 will continue to tell you what love then is but then verse 8 it says love never ends as for prophecies now listen to this very careful as for prophecies they will pass away okay as for tongues they will cease as for knowledge it will pass away okay but for love then if you go verse 13 it uh, it now says love is the greatest of them all <laughs> but this is not just it um let me read 14 for you uh, you ask this question so you have to be patient and listen to what the bible say some of the doctrines is not good to just talk and talk and talk and talk it's just good to listen to what the bible say now first corinthians chapter 14 says pursue love pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gift especially that you may prophesy okay for one who speaks in tongue speaks not to men but for god for no one understand him but he utters mysteries in the spirit now verse 3 on the other hand the one who prophesies speaks to people for their upbuilding and encouragement and consolation the one who speaks in tongues build up himself but the one who prophesies build up the church do you see we are togetherness in in the church of the brethren comes because we want to build the church so if you want to build yourself and you want to speak in tongues it's it's okay to speak but when we are in church we want to build the church we want to build everybody because it clearly says that he who speaks in tongues speaks to build himself we want everybody to benefit okay that is not just it continue reading from verse 5 again now i want you to speak in tongues but even more to prophesy the one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues unless someone interprets so that the church may be built so it says if you speak in tongues and nobody interpret you are 
just wasting the time of the whole congregation you're just building yourself and you don't even bother about the rest of the congregation now continue reading verse 6 now brothers if i come to you speaking in tongues how will it benefit you unless i bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophecy or teaching okay revelation knowledge or prophecy or teaching four things paul says this is the one thing that will benefit you these are the four things that will benefit you but if i come to the church and start speaking in tongues how is that benefiting my servant if even lifeless instrument such as flute or the harp do not give distinct note how will anyone know what is played and if the uh bogus gives an indistinct sound who will give ready for battle so uh with yourself if with your tongue you utter speech that is not intelligible how will anyone know what he said i am not the one speaking it's the bible for you will be speaking into the air do you hear that for you will be speaking into the air there are doubtless many different languages in the world and none is without meaning if i do not know the meaning of the language i will be a foreigner to speak and the speaker a foreigner to me so will yourself since you are eager manifestation of the spirit strive to excel in building up the church strive to excel in building up the church now remember in verse 2 and verse 3 it says one who speaks in tongues build up himself but one who prophesy teach or uh, bring up some intelligent uh, meaning or prophecies build up the church so now verse verse 12 is now telling you and i that strive to build the church verse 13 therefore one who speak in a tongues should pray that he may interpret okay so now verse 13 those people you say speaks in tongues more than the orthodox or you you are now questioning that we don't allow speaking tongues is it offense do they interpret because that's what the bible say clearly verse 13 of chapter 14 of first corinthians therefore one who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret for if i pray in tongue my spirit prays but my mind is unfruitful what am i to do i will pray with my spirit but i will pray with my mind also i will sing praise with my spirit but i will sing with my mind also otherwise if you give thanks with your spirit how can anyone in the position of an outsider say amen who your thanksgiving when he does not know what you are saying ever 17 for you may be giving thanks well enough but the other person is not being built up i thank god now this is my favorite verse of it all verse 18 i thank god that i speak in tongues more than all of you okay nevertheless in church i would rather speak five words I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. That is in the Bible. It's not me speaking. It's the Bible. <laughs> Brothers, do not be children in your thinking. Do not be children in your thinking. Okay? Okay so uh speaking in tongues now let me just jump to verse 20 21 in the law it's written 
by people of strange tongues and by the lips of foreigners will I speak to these people and even then they will not listen to me says the Lord now verse verse 22 Thus, tongues are a sign not for believers are you there tongues are a sign not for believers but for unbelievers while prophecies is a sign not for unbelievers but for believers <clears throat> if therefore this is this is very strong for the church of the brethren now if therefore the whole church comes together and all speaks in tongues and outsiders or unbelievers entered will they not say that you are out of your mind but if all prophesy and an unbeliever or outsiders enters he is convicted by all he is called to accountable so this and many other verses i can go on and read more and more and more verses for you but i i want you to know that these are very strong for us it's clear in the bible i did not thank god i did not read to you my own words neither did i read commentaries for you it is in the bible and it clearly stated that he who speaks in tongues built out himself but he who prophesy or teach or bring up some godly meaning out of the bible and and, and lead others and help others he builds the church so to what extent how does it help if we speak in tongue and nobody interpret it and, and then other people do not even understand what we are saying what does it how does it help how does it build each other so this is this is the the, the uh, reason you shall know that galatians chapter 5 from verse 22 to 23 all the fruits of the spirit to which God says there is no law against them. There is no speaking in tongues there. We have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. So if you have these nine fruits of the Spirit, law does not exist against you. In another way, in another words, you are not going to be condemned. You are not judged. So if you have the fruits of the Spirit, which the speaking in tongue is absent, then God and, and the Bible says you are not condemned. So who is there to judge you? Nobody. The, the Bible is clear here. If you have the Spirit, the, the fruits of the Spirit, you are saved. You are not condemned. So why do we need speaking in tongues to be saved if, this, if, if the fruits of those, the spirits are clear here and we cannot find the speaking in tongues in it? So, um, I will stop there, I think, for now. Just like we said, you can drop more questions at the comment sections or contact, contact us all the time if you have more questions and if you want to talk more. So, thank you.